G'day, this is Mr. Thompson. I'm going to show you how to do graphical analysis for your freefall experiment. Now, I did a video on this a couple of years ago, but since I did that last video, the QCAA has released a new syllabus which uses different conventions. This video shows, shows you how to do the graphical analysis using the QCAA conventions. I'm going to break this video into two parts. The first part will be how to do the linearization. Um, and the second part then will be how to do the error analysis. So firstly, the linearization. Well, let's talk about why linearize. Um, so here's your experiment. Um, you would have dropped a rock from various heights. Um, my data has a rock drop from one meter, two meters, three meters, four meters, and five meters. Uh, and the time taken with a stopwatch uh, to, for the rock to uh, hit the ground. Uh, we put that data into an Excel spreadsheet, and I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, then the next step is we graph that data, and we get a displacement time graph. Now the displacement time graph, if our data is good, will be parabolic. Now a parabolic graph is quite difficult to analyze. Uh, well, more difficult than a linear graph anyway. So if we can linearize our, our data, then that's much easier to confirm that the data matches a trend, and it's much easier to see outliers, and then it can be used to calculate uh, parameters from the graph. For example, in, with this data, we're going to use the slope of the, of the linearized data to calculate g, the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, here's the table we're going to use. Um, I've already set up the, uh, the table uh, with the headings and so forth. Um, I will make this template available to you. Um, have a look in the comments, I'll make a link there. And uh, now this table here uh, has got everything we need in it. I, I, for this first video, we're really only going to be concerned with, well, with our data and our averages and our displacement, and we'll use T squared. In this video, we won't look at um, our deltas, our uncertainty, we won't do that yet. I'll cover that in the next video. Nevertheless, we'll use this, uh, we'll use this table for both videos. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna start putting in my data. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is fix up my significant figures. Uh, Excel, as you'll notice here, I typed in 0 0.50 here we are, up here, and Excel just uh, took the liberty of saying that's 0 0.5. Uh, I want to display two significant figures, so I'm going to select all of my data here, or two decimal places is what I want to um, display. In fact, I'll, I'll do this for my entire table. Um, and I'm going to come up here, and uh, if I select number as my format and now you actually it's done that automatically it's gone to two decimal places by default uh, if I wanted to increase that to three decimal places I could click on that button or decrease those decimal places uh, but two is good so now you see instead of 0 0.5 I've got 0 0.50 and instead of just one down here I've got 1.00 all right next I'm going to calculate my averages so I'm going to click on this first cell here now I want that cell there to be the average of all of these, well, all of these uh, times there. So in this cell here, I'm going to type equals and then average and then open bracket equals average. And now with my mouse, I'm just going to click and drag over the top of all of those cells. Notice I'm, I'm, I'm dragging over the top of that cell five there, even though you can't see it. Uh, and then close my brackets, enter. Um, so there's my average 0.48. If I wanted to check that I got that right, I can select that cell again and I can see up here in the formula bar, uh, B5 to F5, B5 to F5, that's correct. Or I could hit the F2 button, the F2 button, and it puts that uh, blue square around and shows me visually what B5 to F5 is. Okay, I want to do that for all these other cells here underneath. So the easy way to do that is just to click on the first average and then grab the autofill handle there at the bottom right hand corner of the square and then drag it down. And that's now calculated the average uh, for each of those cells. All right, now let's graph the data. Um, so let me just zoom out a little bit. There we go. Uh, so what I want to graph, I want to graph I want to graph displacement um, and the average time. 
Uh, so displacement and the average time. Um, now I really want the displacement on my y-axis and time on my x-axis. Um, but let's let's just uh, see what Excel does. Maybe it'll get it right first time. Maybe we'll have to tweak it. Uh, let's see what happens. So I'm going to go. Oh, so let me just explain what I did there. I selected all of those cells there by just clicking and dragging, and then I held down the control key, down holding down the control key now, key now, and I selected my average cells there. So that's the they're the they're the two uh, sets of data that I want to graph. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click on the XY scatter graph. I'm not going to use the line graph. Don't use that one. Uh, that'll give you an incorrect graph. Uh, but the XY scatter plot. Now, which one to use? You might think you want one with a line. Don't use the one with a line. It will just connect the dots. You don't want to connect the dots. You want to put a trend line in. That's different. So we're going to choose this scatter plot here uh, that doesn't have any lines on it. We'll put a line in later, but we'll, we'll choose the line ourselves. Okay, and there's our data. So let's have a look and see what we've got here. Uh, we have got, uh, let's see, it's put uh, it's put displacement on the x-axis, and it's put uh, time on the y-axis. So we want it the other way around. So we'll have to fix that. Okay, so I'm going to click on my chart here. I'm going to right-click on my chart, not on uh, not on a grid or a dot or a title, just in a blank space on the chart. So I'll right-click there. And I'm going to go to select data, select data. Now, don't use this switch row column button. That doesn't do what you think it's going to do. It doesn't switch your axes. Um, to switch our axes, we need to click on series one um, and we need to edit series one. So if I do that, uh, now there's our X values and there's our Y values and it's got them the wrong way around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this little button here for my X values and I'm going to change my X values. So at the moment, the X values are displacement. I want the X values to be the average time. Okay, so now I click on this little button here again. Now my Y values, I'm gonna do the same. Click over here and my Y values. Now my Excel seems to have some sort of bug and it doesn't display it, but it is still working. Hopefully yours is displaying what you've selected. Okay, 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 now that's better. Now we've got, um, down here we've got time and up here we've got displacement. Now, uh, just so that I know what's what, I'm going to add some uh, some axis titles. So if I click on this on this plus button here, so again I've clicked on the chart, clicked on the plus button, uh, add some axis titles, and let's just double click down here and use my keyboard to change that to that is time time comma t in brackets s for seconds. That's time in seconds, and over here we want displacement. So let me just oh, fix that. Displacement uh, S, and that's in, what's that in? Meters. Okay. And while we're at it, let's fix the chart title. Uh, what are we going to call it? We'll call it time, displacement time graph. Displacement time graph of free fall data. How's that? Now it's a heading, so I probably should use some capitals. Let's do that. All right, displacement time graph of free fall data. Now, um, that, oh, I guess you could say that looks a bit like a, that looks like a straight line, uh, but actually that should be a parabola. Um, and, and I'll show you why linearization is so important because it's very hard to tell by looking at that is is that a, is that a linear trend or is it a parabolic trend? All right, so how do we tell whether this is linear data or parabolic data? Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the equations and see what the equations say. So if we look at our kinematics equation, let's look at uh, let's pick this one, s equals ut plus half at squared. So s is our displacement. Um, U is our initial velocity, which is zero because we're, we're dropping the rock, we're not throwing it. Uh, so it starts with a velocity of zero. Uh, T is time and A is acceleration due to gravity. So we'll substitute, we'll substitute uh, zero for the initial velocity and G, acceleration due to gravity, for the acceleration. Uh, we've called down positive, so, all, so, so S 
and uh, G are both positive, so we don't have to worry about any negatives. And we end up with S equals half GT squared. So if we put S on our Y axis and T on our X axis, as we have done, um, we see that uh, because of that T squared, we should get a parabolic, we should get parabolic data. Okay, so let's put a parabolic trend line in. So if I right click on my graph um, and click add a trend line, there we go, it's put in a linear trend line, a straight line, uh, but we want a parabolic trend line. So I'm gonna double click on the trend line there and it'll open up this window over here. Make sure this right hand icon, trend line options is clicked. We'll come down here. Now a parabola is a polynomial, polynomial, a second order polynomial because it has uh, to the power of two in it. Um, uh, so that's made it a, a, a parabola. You can see there's a slight curve there. In fact, if I, um, let's, let's just assume that uh, at zero time, the rock has fallen zero meters. Uh, I guess you could argue that that's, uh, that's actually an observed data point because um, when you were still holding the rock, it hadn't gone anywhere yet. So I'm gonna set the intercept to zero. So that, that, that means the line will go through zero, zero. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to forecast, I'm going to extend that trend line back. So maybe back to, uh, let's do 0.45. There we go, that's pretty close. I could maybe go a little bit further than that. 0.48, I'll do that. Okay, so you can see that's taken my trend line back to pretty much to zero. And you can see now that, that looks like a parabola. Uh, oh, now it's done some weird stuff to my axis, so I'm just going to fix that. I'm going to click on my uh, numbers here on my y-axis, and again click on this right icon over here, and I want to set my minimum back to zero. I don't want, I don't need negative numbers in there. There we go. So that's uh, that is a good parabolic graph. Okay, so we've plotted. S versus T, and that's given us a parabolic graph, which is which is what we expected. Um, let's linearize the data. Um, so to linearize the data, uh, we need to make our graph look like it's got the form. It needs to have the form y equals mx plus c. So that's the graph for a linear um, for a linear graph or a linear equation, uh, where m and c are constants, and y and x are our variables that we plot on the y and the x-axis. Uh, so, if we rewrite our equation, s equals half gt squared, if we write that as s equals half gt squared plus zero, and we plot, instead of plotting on, on the y-axis, we use uh, s, which is what we did up here, but on the x-axis, instead of plotting t, like we've done here, Let's plot t squared. So what we're doing is we're using t squared instead of x. And our plus c is zero. So our y-intercept is zero. So, so the trick here is that we're, we're substituting s for y, which we did last time, but we're substituting t squared for x. In other words, we're, putting, we're gonna calculate t squared and put t squared on the x-axis. And what that should give us is that should give us a linear graph where the slope, m, the, sl the slope of the uh, of the graph should be half g. So by then looking at the slope, we then, we'll then be able to calculate g. So let's do that. Okay, so my table's already set up. Um, uh, what I want to do is I want to put t squared in this column. Um, so let's do that. Equals, well that's my time, that's my average time there. Equals that. Uh, carrot 2, that means squared to the power of 2. Enter. Okay, so that's t squared, and I'm going to grab my uh, autofill handle and drag that all the way down to the bottom, and then my averages. Now that's too many decimal places. Let's just fix that. Uh, let's reduce the number of decimal places. Let's go back to about there. Um, and oh, the other thing that it's done. Notice here it's um, it's uh, mucked up my border. So I'm just going to again. I'm going to put an outside border around there. I'll select all those cells and put a outside, a thick outside border. Okay. Um, all right. Now what we want to do is we want to graph, we'll do a different graph. This time we'll graph displacement S versus T squared. 
so let's do that again. Um, so I'm going to insert. Actually, first I'm going to select my uh, select my displacement column. Then I'm going to hold down Control. Uh, and instead of selecting my average, I'm going to select T squared instead. Okay, and I'm going to insert my graph. There we go. Uh, and once again, it's got the axes wrong. So let me just fix those. I'm going to right click and uh, select data, uh, edit my series, and there we go. There's my x, my x axis. I want t squared on my x axis there, and on my y axis, on my y axis, I want my displacement. There, okay. There go, okay. There we go. Okay. Um, let me put my now I'm going to put uh, linearized data linearized data um, displacement versus time squared okay and just to tidy this up a little bit I'm going to add some access titles there's my time squared uh, T, or T squared, I'll fix that in a second, and that's in seconds squared. My units now are not seconds anymore, they're seconds squared. So let me just make that two. Uh, if I come back up to home and font, make that two a superscript, so it's squared. And same with my squared there. We go font, uh, superscript. There you go, so time squared, t squared in, in seconds squared. And over here now I've got, um, what do I have? Displacement, displacement, uh, displacement s, and that's in meters still. Okay, so that now should be, well I'm hoping now it should be linear data. So let's add a trend line, let's add a linear trend line and see. So plus uh, add a trend line. It puts in a linear trend line by default. Okay, now I'm going to double click on my trend line and I'm going to, let's see what I'm going to do. Click on this right hand icon here. Um, now I'm going, to I'm going to display the equation on the chart. There's my equation y equals 5.0925x minus 0.1165. So let's recall that we plotted s versus t squared so our m our the slope of our graph should be half g and the y intercept of our graph should be zero now it's not quite zero but it's pretty close to zero i mean this was experimental data um, so we should be able to then calculate our value of g by simply doubling the slope so uh, 5.0925 that's my slope times two. I do that on my calculator, I get 10.185 meters per second per second. So if we compare that with uh, 9.8, um, that's actually a pretty good experimental value for G, considering the primitive method that we use, just dropping rocks and measuring them with a stopwatch. All right, so that's the end of this video. Uh, in the next video, uh, we'll look at how to analyze our uncertainties, uh, come up with a plus or minus value for our, um, for our value of G. Hope to see you then.